Alrighty, so tonight we're going to try and tackle the rest of the wiring. We did about, I'd say 75-80% of it. The other night got a lot of stuff repinned and lengthened and uh, we still have to figure out a couple bugs and get a few more wires run as far as the body harness goes and get them run over. So other than that, I'm working on a couple little things here. I did pick up power steering hose to try and get this guy mounted. And then I also, I put new shifter bushings in. Since we had that all pulled out, they were basically trashed. Um, so I got the cube speed shifter bushings and I realized the top, I already have it completely mangled, but there's a portion that slips over your actual shifter and then there's a whole bunch of rubber bits in here and just shit. Um, and the top half of my shifter was just spinning on this, so something in there gave way, so I just ripped it all out. I'm assuming all this rubber and garbage was just the uh, dampening of some sort, so. I chopped most of it off and I'm going to weld this guy directly on here, shorten it by, I don't know, maybe about an inch and a half. I think it's going to end up being, um, weld that on, get the transmission filled back up with fluid and can get that back together. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get this welded on and back together, see what happens. So, I don't even know what day it is anymore. This is all going on in one video because there's not a whole lot happening. But, uh, ended last night with starter failure. So, unfortunately, the oh-so-pretty 1J starter is out. Uh, this solenoid was garbage. Must have got a good bit of water in there because it was rusted up at the plunger. Plunger was not working, so swap that out, put the 2J starter in, and although it's quite different and everything we looked up, they all say they're interchangeable. Um, put that in, wired it up, changed the plug on it to the old style off this motor, and it was not doing shit. Uh, the solenoid was engaging, but it was just like it hit, and then it would turn the motor over just to cut hair, and then that was it. So I went home last night, just scratched my head for a while, thinking like, man, maybe we ought to go over all the grounds and just double check stuff. And it came over here today and was like, you know what, screw it. Turn the motor over a little bit by hand, maybe just half a turn on the crank. And it uh, started works fine. Everything works. So now we can uh, continue forward. We're not getting, the coils are not firing. So that's gonna be our first step. We got fuel, we got fuel the rail and the injectors. Um, so we're gonna test once we, uh, I get a second hand out here. Um, see what's going on with the coils and make sure all of our mess of spaghetti is correct and go from there do one system at a time so we shall see what happens i also got done the mount for the power steering tank uh it's not pretty i gotta pull it back off and uh clean stuff up maybe paint them so they don't look like just horse shit galvanized shit so yeah one step closer. All right, so since I went fuel cell, I have two holes in the trunk, which here, let me show you real quick. They are that guy, and then that one over there. They are actually little inserts that bolt up from the bottom with rubber grommets the whole way around. Um, her seal rather uh, the right one I'm going to plug and the left one I'm probably going to do the same thing but 
fab up a little bit different of a uh, a cover so to speak for it uh, that I can run the fuel lines through so I just took that one traced it on some of this uh, sheeting I'm gonna cut it out and then for right now because uh, this this surround is actually metal um, but it has this rubber seal on top of it so I think for right now I'm just gonna cut this out and then trim it a little bit to size depending and then glue it on top of here with some window sealer um, but I think down the road I might pull that out and then just weld it straight to that little frame so All right, got all this stuff under the car tied up. Um, got that plate back in there. That's all sealed up, bolted back up. And then over here, oh Jesus Christ. Um, you can see my fuel lines run up under the uh, second hole, which I'm gonna figure out at some point here. But, uh, Got all my lines run, hung up well. And yeah, so the only thing I do as far as wiring back this far, I have to uh, get the speed sensor, which is right here. At least I think it's a speed sensor. Yeah, it should be. Um, then the reverse switch done, but I got the slave cylinder, all that stuff done. Um, yeah. So we are just waiting on to work the final little kinks out with the wiring and get that and should be ready to fire up. So. Hopefully in the next, uh, next video, she'll be fired up. Got the uh, shifter all back together um, with the uh, cube speed bushings and then I obviously cut that down, weld her all back together. It feels absolutely great. I mean, for not being a short shifter. Um, that and this, this knob weighs probably I don't know, maybe 75, 76 pounds. So, uh, yeah, it feels awesome. I'm uh, really happy with cube speed support because I had a little bit of an issue with the, I don't know exactly what you want to call it, the, uh, the lower bushing that actually sets down into the actual transmission. I was having a hell of a time getting that seated properly because every time I go to set it in there, it would cock off to one way. And I didn't want to beat on it and bitch it up, but uh, they told me to file just a little bit more of a bevel around the edge for it to seat better. So that worked beautifully. And obviously all this shit is uh, tore apart pretty much so far still. So we could get to the uh, all the wiring necessary, do little tests and whatnot. But uh, coming along and close.